Back on the weekend with Anthony Opperman. It's that time, like every Saturday, time for our weekly wildlife conversation. And to do that, we welcome in a good friend from the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, Chris Dunavant. And Chris, your weekend activities for this weekend actually have inspired our conversation for this week. So why don't you just go ahead and tell everybody what you're going to be participating in this weekend, and then we'll kind of take it from there. All right, I am uh, participating. I am fishing in the 5th Annual Yak Attack Kayak for Charity Tournament and uh, Kayak Fish for Charity Tournament. It benefits Heroes on the Water. Uh, We're going to be the headquarters where we launch out of, so to speak, is in Prince Edward County near between Sandy River Reservoir and Briary Creek Lake. And how this works is uh, you can fish a 50-mile radius of that area. So it's not on one particular body of water. You get to choose where you want to fish. And uh, so you just launch out from that point. You can be at the boat ramp uh, at sunup, at first light. There'll be a time designated. And you fish your day and then come back in and bring in actually pictures of your fish. So it's a real neat concept of fishing out of a kayak and it's catch and release and you take a you have a a ruler that you're given and a little uh, symbol for the day that that's unique to the day so that they know that the pictures are from today uh, from the tournament official time and you collect these pictures and then when you come in to you know what in the tournaments I've fished in the past would be the weigh-in well you come in and you bring your memory card from your camera and it's all by length a uh, real nice thing is that you get to release the fish right after uh, you've caught them after you've measured them taken a picture release them and so that's really great for uh, mortality rates for fish and things like that but uh, I'm really excited it's the first time I've ever fished a kayak tournament and don't worry, I'm not like trying to get <laughs> back into tournament fishing. Uh, my friend Winston, he mentioned this to me back earlier in the year and said, hey, you know, he, he's been doing these type of things. He said, why don't you come out and join us? And uh, it's a good time. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, it sounded like a lot of fun. There's a, a tournament meeting on Friday night, and then the tournament, of course, is on Saturday. And then there's a pig picking dinner and an award ceremony and he just said it's a good time. It's a lot of good fellowship, good friends are there. And uh, so I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. You know, and uh, of course, I'm going there for fun, but I'm definitely, the competitive juices, they're not totally gone away. <laughs> so they're still there. I'm, st- I'm, I'm definitely thinking about my strategy for this tournament. Uh, David Dudley coming out in you in a little bit. A little bit. And it doesn't hurt that, you know, talking to him, you know, about him and to him the last couple of weeks, that, that doesn't hurt at all. <laughs> Chris Dunham from the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, our weekly wildlife conversation here on the weekend with Anthony Opperman. And Chris, just talk about the differences in fishing from a kayak as opposed to a regular boat. And, and you know, for you, how does this change how you fish at all or, you know, the way that you have things set up? Oh, yeah, there's no doubt. It, it is a lot different. Um, fishing from a bass boat or any other type of boat, you have a larger area to work with. You have a more stable platform. Obviously, you have electro- electric and gasoline propulsion. And um, so there's some advantages there of having that. But the kayak, uh, one of the, some of the great things about the kayak is obviously cost. There's just so much less cost involved with a kayak, right from initial price to maintenance. There's just, you don't have the insurance, you don't have all the gas, the the motor maintenance and the things that go wrong and break, everything is less expensive. So there's a big advantage there. Um, and also, um, you can get uh, into different places, shallower water, smaller bodies of water. You can. I've fished swamps in my kayak, and you can sneak through little cuts in, in, in the river and things like that where a, a regular conventional boat would be very difficult. And it's also it's good exercise. And it's e- they're easy to handle and store. You can keep them in your garage. It's, there's a less of a storage issue. You throw them in the back of the truck or on top of the car or in the back of the SUV or on a trailer, and you're off and running. And it's just uh, it's a lot easier in that sense. And, uh, you know, and it's a lot of fun, too. It really is. Uh, it's a good time. You're paddling. You're fishing. You might fish bodies of water that you normally wouldn't fish in a conventional boat. Certainly, you can float 
like the James River. You can float that. You can float smaller rivers and creeks. And uh, so it opens up some new possibilities, even to some smaller waters. Although you're not limited to that. You can fish all the big waters you want. And um, But, uh, you know, it's really a lot of fun. And I also like the fact that you're very stealthy. I can't tell you how many times fishing for my kayak I've caught fish right under the boat. Or you just glide along and you don't spook fish. Whereas in a normal conventional boat or my bass boat, I wouldn't have that opportunity. Uh, and even wildlife, they're, you're just kind of quietly moving along and you'll come right up on some deer along the bank and they don't even understand who you are, what you're doing there, and they're not spooked and they're in fact more curious. So there's some real neat advantages to the kayak, but definitely as far as to go to your question, uh, as far as strategy, yeah, you have to downscale the amount of tackle you're going to take because you're in a smaller platform. Not as many rods, you know, in a bass boat. Um, pros, and myself included, might have 15 to 20 rods in the rod locker. Not so in a kayak. You know, you might be down, you know, might have two to, to four to five rods maybe uh, at the most. So you do have to downscale everything and uh, focus more on, it causes you to be more specific. But hey, just go right back to what we talked about with David Dudley. He simplifies his tackle, and sometimes that's a huge advantage, just having just what you need and not all the extra stuff. Now, in terms of controlling the boat, obviously that's a little bit different too because mm -hmm. with the kayak, it's 100% manual, right. whereas with a bass boat, for instance, you have other ways to control it. How, how do you approach that too? You know, that can be a challenge. Uh, certainly in fishing and current, you're being swept down the river by the current. Right. Uh, what I encourage folks to do is what I call combo fishing is to fish an area, and when you come to that quality area, find a place to beach the kayak or get out of the kayak and wade fish. You can, you can just strap the kayak to your belt or to your life jacket, or you can anchor it and fish the area more thoroughly and then get back in the kayak and use the kayak as a means of getting to a spot. Um, also, there are anchor systems that you can use. But um, there, it does present a challenge. I mean, it is definitely some give and take there. Uh, you can have the, I, I keep the paddle just resting on my, across my legs and cast, and then we'll adjust the paddle when needed. Sometimes I'll tie up to, a, uh, to something or anchor. There's also kayaks that have foot control pedals. So they're actually propelled, you're pedaling, and there's paddles underneath. Well, those are really nice because you have complete hands-free operation and mobility and you can cast and you can paddle that boat and uh, and have your hands free to fish so those are uh, a nice option they cost a little bit more but they can be a really good option too chris donovan from the virginia department of game and inland fisheries talking kayak fishing here <laughs> this morning of course that's what chris will be doing this weekend uh, Chris, you know, you bring up the, the kayaks with the paddles, and when we were up at the fishing expo in February, I mean, it was crazy to see all the stuff that some of these new kayaks have in them. I mean, there are if you really wanted to go all out with one of these kayaks, I mean, you could get all kinds of bells and whistles added to them. There's no doubt. Uh, you know, kayak fishing is interesting. Um, a lot of people think of a kayak, they, they think of that little, small, thin, short kayak in the white water, the guy with the helmet on, and that's their idea of a kayak. Uh, but the kayaks that are designed for fishing are larger, they're designed for stability, they're designed for storage of a tackle, and so there's a lot, there's a big difference there. But I do always say kayak fishing can be very simple. You can fish from any kayak. Or it can be, you can make it as complex as you want. And all the bells and whistles, like you said, you can rig it up with anchor systems. You can rig it up with a depth finder, rod holders, all types of lighting and storage and things like that. So you can really add all the little components to your kayak to make it uh, a fishing vessel that has most everything a larger boat would have just in a smaller package or you can it can be as simple as a plain old kayak with nothing but but you and a paddle and a rod and reel and a bucket of worms you know it can be just that simple so it's just whatever you however you want to go about it whatever angle you want to take on it chris before i let you go obviously there are a number of advantages to kayak fishing as you mentioned and it's definitely a lot of fun to be out there and 
and kind of have control of the boat yourself. But I think, as we talk about several times on this show, safety is definitely paramount when you're kayak fishing. Just talk about some of the things that folks should do in order to make sure that they are really safe in one of those vessels. Absolutely. The number one thing, obviously, is wear a PFD always. I, you know, it all, I always cringe when I see folks kayaking and they don't wear a PFD because you're so low to the water. I mean, this is true anytime you're on the water, but it just how, how much more in a smaller boat like that, things can happen so quickly, especially if you're in current, but even in still flat water, you can hit something and fall out and hit your head. I mean, you can't control what's going to happen when you're in that process. So wear a PFD, and they are making so many good PFDs these days that are specially designed for kayaking, specially designed for kayak fishing. So the, the flotation is around the, the torso area and not in the upper chest so that you have the mobility to cast and also you're not going to get really hot with having this heavy thing up on your shoulders. So there's, there's some great vests out there that you, that you can have. And also they have pockets in them so you can have your tackle really accessible right there for you. So by all means, invest in a, in a PFD. And of course, you're the smaller body of smaller boat on the water. It's incumbent upon you to be watching out for others. You know, everybody else should be watching for everybody, but don't expect that. Paddle with an expectation that they can't see you. And so always keep that in mind. Watch your surrounding. Watch other boats on the water. Have a boat whistle. Have a light in the boat with you. Uh, even if you're, like, you're thinking, hey, I'm just going to kayak during the day for a few hours. You never know what's going to happen. Have that light on board so that if, if you do get caught out stranded at nighttime, have plenty of water, safety equipment, first aid kit, things like that. Have some of those necessary items just in case something happens unexpected out there. Just be prepared for the worst. And I think if folks do that and practice good common sense on the water, be safe, be careful about how you go about doing things, uh, it's a very safe sport and uh, people can really enjoy it and, and, and be safe out there. It's definitely good stuff, Chris. Get Chris Dunnerman from the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, our weekly wildlife conversation here on the weekend with Anthony Opperman. And Chris, best of luck this weekend. I hope it goes well. And I'm glad that at least for the first half of our next segment, we've already got some content built in. We can't wait to hear how you did. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's exciting. I'm looking, I better, you know, hey, David Dudley, you know, if you don't win, you're just first loser, you know, right? <laughs> so I've I got that in my mind. And it's, a, it's nice because. It, the tournament is by length and its biggest fish. So I'm out there with one focus. I don't have to think about, do I need to get a limit? You know, I need to think about big fish. So it's the kind of thing I like. Just have one singular focus, big bass. And um, so that makes it kind of fun. So hopefully I can have a good event and uh, have something good to report when, uh, next week. Yeah, I'd love to tweet a picture of your trophy if you uh, <laughs> actually win this thing. That would be exciting. Yeah, it would be. You get Chris Dudman from the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries. Chris, as always, thank you so much for taking the time. And again, best of luck. Thanks, Anthony. I appreciate it. Stay tuned. When we come back here on the weekend, I've got my game plan for the weekend as we bring another show to a close. That's next here on Sports Radio 910. The show is almost over, but the weekend is just getting started. More of the weekend with Anthony Opperman is next on Sports Radio 910.